Good afternoon, Poké Sports, and welcome to another VGC Battle Stadium Series 7 video, bringing you an Araquanid team because I have never tried Araquanid before, and it's the end of Series 7, Series 8, this is uh, right around the horizon. So, with the introduction of Kyogre, we will never get to use another water type again, so here I have Araquanid. Let's see how this does. I'm actually super excited because a lot of people have requested this Pokemon, so I wanted to go ahead and uh, show that I cared, and I actually read the comments. So please do leave a comment of what you guys want to see, especially for Series 8. I know, obviously, a bunch of restricted mods are going to come in through. I'm going to use them all, I promise, except for Cosmon and Cosmoium. And you'll probably see a video on it. But anyway, leave a comment. Let me know what you're going to be using, what you think is good, and what you think is going to be underrated. I want to try them all, and I haven't decided what order I want to play them in yet. Anyway, let's move on with the rest of the team. We have the Incineroar here for the fake out because it's going to be a trick room team. We have the re redirection here for the Rage Powder. Again, it's going to be a trick room team. We have the Reggie Lucky just so we can do some pretty good damage outside of trick room. We have the Cresselia here to set trick room. The Stack Attacker here to set trick room and also sweep in trick room. And then, you know, we have a Rackwind here to also do well in trick room. We'll see how this goes. No promises. Um... I know a rack when it can be very good, but I know it does take a little bit of setup because it does kind of require trick room to be good. Uh, my team does not appreciate ground. They don't appreciate fighting. Uh, so let's hope that we don't get punished too much for it. Anyway, on to the battles. Now, ain't this a team? Um, wow. Okay, what a team. <laughs> Quagsire, Sableye, Blastoise, Clefable, Grimmsnarl, Snorlax. The only thing that I see is maybe a potential follow me shell smash thing going on. Maybe also a quash thing going on. I think I definitely want Trick Room here. Maybe not lead with it though. Let's go ahead and go with Reggie Lucky. Because their whole team is kind of weak to Reggie Lucky except for the Quagsire. We actually don't have a good way of dealing with Quagsire now that I'm looking at the team. Hmm, that could end poorly. Oh well. Uh, let's just do Regilucky Cress. Bring in the Araquanid. Because it's the Araquanid video. We'll bring it in the back, though. And then maybe an Incin. Uh, Incin against all those water types, though. Might not be too good. Maybe an Amoongus. Yeah, Amoongus could make sense here. We have sleep and stuff. Could work. We're relying on a lot of the damage to come from the Araquanid, so I can only hope the Araquanid is going to do a lot of damage. Like I said, uh, first time using Raquanid, don't know where this is going to go. <laughs> don't know if it's going to do damage, if it's going to disappoint me. It's holding Mystic Water, so I'm hoping that a geyser is hurt. Maybe I should be running this on like a rain room team now that I'm thinking about it. But hey, oh well, too late. The team's made. Oh, that's cute. Okay, ZC, you have a very cute background. I might steal that. That's adorable. It's like peeking behind the, the broken paper. Zoebris and Relaxo. German player, hey? Um, don't know how to feel about this. I'm definitely concerned. I'm gonna go for Electro Ball onto Mr. Relaxo over here. And I'm gonna Helping Hand boost that. Sableye could fake out my crest, though. It also could fake out my Regilucky. Oh no. Did I mess up? No! I messed up. Ugh. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> That'll do it! <laughs> Um, I don't even know what to say. Okay, I guess. Let me just go with my rack with it now before something else blows up. I'll tell you what. Didn't see that one coming. Goes into Turtok. The Blastoise. Alright, let's just Dynamax Max guys are the Zoebris? Zabaris. Don't ask me. And let's go for the trick room here. Just in case it, they decide to sell shell smash, we can uh, switch up the speed a little bit. We are going to be giving it the geyser, which is a little bit bad. 
Also, they just went for a looks like a just Gigantamax Blastoise. This is a little bad. Because all things considering, I am not a very fast Cresselia. And I'm also not a very bulky Cresselia. Not especially defensive, at least. I'm very physically defensive, so... Theoretically speaking, if this Blastoise wanted to KO my Cress, I feel like they could. Especially if they had, say, you know, a helping hand in the back. Or right there on the Sableye. Quash. Quashing my Cress? I'm already going for Trick Room, dude. Darkness, ugh. You had the darkness? Yikes, okay, they did care of the crest, so speed is locked now. I am not in a good position right now. I didn't even do damage to his mons yet. Technically, he only did damage to his own mons. Oh, that's... Okay! Oh, that's a crit. Okay. I was about to say, wait, does Araquanid always do that much damage? Um, back to bad news. I gave rain to Blastoise. And I only got an Among Us left. Whatever I do with the Among Us, I gotta put Blastoise to sleep. That's like my only option. More Lord? Yikes. Does that get water absorb? There's no way you'd carry water absorb not unaware, right? Only one way to find out, I guess. Let's just spore Turtok for now. So we have Sash, we should be able to easily. I love how Quagsire has the word Lord in its name. It's Lord Quagsire. Lord, Fa Lord Farquad, the Quagsire. <laughs> More Lord protects? Okay, that's fine. I guess we get to learn about its uh, water absorb status. And then Hailstorm, probably onto my Amoongus. Doesn't even break, it to, break us down to Sash, which is nice. And it's going to also be nice putting this Blastoise to sleep. Oh, that was a crit too, wow. The issue here is, I feel like we have to... Okay, thank goodness, not Water Absorb. We're going to have to KO the Morlord before we KO the Blastoise. Because I do think Blastoise can't touch our... Our Raquinid. Because that Blastoise is guaranteed one turn of that sleep. And Morlord can't protect. So what I think I have to do is go for the Max Geyser onto Quagsire. And then protect myself. Just so I don't let Quagsire take out my Moongus for no reason. Moongus is always nice to have redirection later on. All right, Blastoise still asleep. Recover? You're already at, like, full HP, dude. You're already there. Why do you have to recover? <laughs> yeah, I really have to KO this, like, while I'm Dynamaxed. This is a lot of damage here, though. Yes! Okay, Araquanid is doing something. So far, so good. This is amazing. Araquanid can KO Quagsire. Hard counter. <laughs> Alright, now we just gotta deal with the Sleepy Blastoise. Um, do we Rage Powder? I guess we don't really have to. Um, I'm also gonna go for the Liquidation because I have Water Bubble, Rain, and Mystic Water. I think that's my best option. And I'm gonna go for the Sludge Bomb here just because I think two turns of sleep isn't too much to ask for. Yes, got it. Three turns of sleep, that might be too much. So I will Rage Powder this next turn for sure. Oh, look at that damage to Blastoise. What? Second crit. Araquanid's trying to impress, friends. Trying to impress each and every one of you saying, Hey, you remember me? I'm that Gen 7 Pokemon that no one remembers, but everyone uses my pre-evo and Little Cup. Not bad. Going for the Rage Powder. Blastoise wakes up, goes for the Dark Pulse, into my Amoongus, will knock out my Amoongus. No, it won't. <laughs> and Araquanid gonna leech whatever's left of Blastoise's life. Not bad. That's a battle. I gotta say, first turn, 
self-destruct kind of ruined me. Uh, but thankfully, we were able to come back and and do that. Requinid. Oh, ho, ho, another Garchomp. A Garchomp and Hippowdon team. That's definitely different. With a Togekiss. Okay, so they're, uh, this is funny because we just used Garchomp Togekiss and we just used Hippowdon on the video before. I'm not trying to say this opponent steal my ideas because those videos weren't even dropped yet because they literally just recorded them a couple minutes ago. But hey, that's cool. Um. Ooh, that Ferrothorn, though. Is not something you want to see. Double ground types is also not something a Lucky wants to see either. I'm going to go Cress and I'm going to go Amoongus. No. Yes, I go Cress, Amoongus, Ensign. No. I go Cress, Ensign, Araquanid, Staka. And lock. And pray. Um, the reason for this is... Nothing on his team wants to get intimidated. At least none of the sweepers on his team want to get intimidated. If they decide to go for the Lapras, then I should still be theoretically okay. After a parting shot. And I think that's just my best option overall. Oh, blue hair. That's nice. Blue hair, green background. That's cool. All these people have such better trainer cards than me. I really have to work on mine. Sand swept. Ooh, I like that. The sand swept. Oh, it's like you worked hard to get that one. All right. Well, um, kind of a pretty good position for us. Not going to lie. I actually don't think anything can go wrong by just parting shot onto the Tokus. And then setting up Trick Room. Yes, they could probably go for the flinch hacks. And yes, that would be sad. But at the same time, this is my opportunity to... Ooh, I could taunt the Togekiss too. No, I'm going to parting shot it. I'm going to parting shot for now. This is my shot to go into Araquanid. And I feel like no matter what both of those Pokemon do, they can't knock out my Cresselia. Like I said, the only thing they could do is probably flinch it. But what does Hippowdon do here? You're tricking what onto who? Choice Scarf onto my Cress. Okay. Good thing I didn't taunt the the toga kiss that's really good i was really thinking about it um let me just go into a rack one anyway <laughs> goes for eq all right this shouldn't do anything to anybody it's a negative one eq cool zero damage the problem is i'm not locked onto trick room <laughs> So I'm going to have to switch my crest. But hey, this is a free geyser now. And since this is like a... Oh no, I get to choose my move now, right? Nope, I it only allows trick room. That's so dumb. Um, let me go back in Ensign. Just because I don't want to take the quake with anybody else. And let's make, let's go for the geyser. Onto Hippowdon. Tokus might follow me. But since it was Scarfed, it doesn't have follow me, right? Like, there's no way you have followed me for Scarfed Togekiss. <laughs> right? I hope so. That'd be so weird. Follow me trick. <laughs> Only two moves the Togekiss has. All right, swap another crest, going into the ensign. Get that second intimidate off, followed by our own Dynamax. I don't think my opponent Dynamax is here. That would be strange. The only issue with this turn is that now they're going to be able to break my Shuckaberry preemptively. Like my Shuckaberry is going to like proc on a move that wouldn't have done any damage to me anyway. Stop gyrating, Araquanid. What is that? That's so gross. 
Yep, no follow me. Just going for a straight Max Geyser. I gotta say, though, the Geyser animation on Arachnid, where it just takes its little pincer and goes into the screen. 10 out of 10. I like it. I like it a lot. Air Slash. Uh-oh. Thankfully, it doesn't do any damage. Cool. All right, another game where it looks like a rack one is going to take over. We're set to sweep. We got the trick room up. We got the rack one in. What, else, what more do we need? We have to fake out this next upcoming turn. Well, that's right. The Tokus was also negative one because of the uh, parting shot. I completely forgot about that, too. Okay, at least it looks like my opponent's having some hard time deciding what they want to do. <laughs> Sends out Ursh. Okay. We could deal. That's just the fake out Ursh. Followed by a geyser on to kiss. Because we could always deal with Ursh next turn. I feel like that's an Ursh protect incoming. If that's Scarf Togekiss, I can at least guarantee that I won't be wasting a turn of Dynamax by targeting this Togekiss. Since it definitely doesn't have protect. Uh, downside could be if that Ursh decides to Dynamax, it'll be able to get an attack off. But I don't think it'll be able to do much beyond just max knuckling my instant. I should worry about the, the Urshi though. Because the Pokemon I have in the back are Staka and Cresselia. So if I don't, if I ignore this Urshi for two. Who's Dynamaxing? I was going to say, if I ignore this Urshi for too long, I might lose the game. Okay, it's Togekiss. All right, good. At least I know I didn't waste my fake out. If I force him onto a Protect, so be it. Nothing's getting hit this turn. Oh, guard. Wow. Very interesting. Okay. Okay, hear me out. I have to attack this. I have to attack this Urshifu like now, 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 now. You know? Like immediately now, now. So we're going to just go do that. Because if I ignore this Urshifu for too long, I'm going to lose the game. I've lost too many games to Urshifu just being the last alive and being able to wicked blow everything and win. And we're not having that today. And this is also great because we get one more parting shot off on this Togekiss before leaving. Amazing. And amazing. Cool. Very useful last turn of Dynamax. Getting rid of an Urshi is always worth. You're now a negative two Togekiss. We can leave here. I feel a lot safer. I think I bring back what? My my crest? My choice scarfed crest? <laughs> For my choice scarf trick room? I will be the fastest negative seven priority thing in the game. Don't worry. Ouch. That intimidate. I mean, that parting shot helped so much. I would not have taken that that well. I'm kind of leaning towards ignoring this toad kiss. Yep. Definitely ignoring the toad kiss. I have to go for this Garchomp now. It's just funny because like, every Pokemon my opponent switches into... It's just always a Pokemon I am more afraid of than Togekiss. And now that he just Dynamaxed the Togekiss, I'm really not afraid of Togekiss. Do I have... Is this still, um... Trick Room? Yeah, Trick Room for one more turn. I'm gonna lock on a Helping Hand for now. No, that's silly. I should just lock on Ice Beam. Double down on this Chomp. Surely I just need one Ice Beam for Chomp. I'm going to go for the Liquidation on Totokiss. Ooh, big damage. Nice. What? Are you Bright Powder? And did it just work? Am I going to lose because of Bright Powder?
Whoa, okay. This just became very bad. Okay, well, I'm gonna go in with Incin. I'm gonna get rid of one of those attack boosts. Bright power. Look, I, I have to check my opponent's team after this. Just to make sure I'm not going crazy. Now we just go for Ice Beam there. No, actually, no, no, we don't. We go for Ice Beam on Togekiss, and then we fake out the Chomp. We try to get him down to at least one Pokemon so that we could double into whatever he has left, which is going to be the Garchomp. I don't believe Garchomp is going to be able to 1v1 even my Crest at only plus one. They would have to go for a second Sword Stance, which would require me to not fake them out, but I'm just faking them out. We're not having that. But wow, Bright Powder Chomp. What? Is that like a Sandvale thing with Sandvale Bright Powder? I mean, I guess that makes a little bit of sense. I didn't take any damage, so it doesn't have rough skin, so it's definitely Sandvale. But it wasn't the sand, so it has to be Sandvale and Bright Powder. Jeez. That's a little bit overkill, don't you think? That's a little bit overkill. Rain's gonna stop. Garchomp's gonna pop. I'm gonna skiddly do dop and ice beam and uh, parting shot. No, just fly blitz. We'll keep it simple. It's just one Pokemon left. I don't think I have to parting shot often. I could be annoying and parting shot over and over and over to like super duper guarantee a win, but I think doing this is just fine. Remember, I still do have shock repair. Fire Fang. Okay. Oh wow, Ice Beam was not enough. I would have thought Ice Beam was enough to KO, but I guess not. Let's see if Fire Blast, uh, I mean, uh, Flare Blitz is enough. Still not enough. Wow. This Garchomp is resilient. I gotta say. But seeing as how the only option for this Garchomp against me is a Fire Fang, yeah, that'll end like that. Cool. I mean, we take those. It was nice seeing a Trick Togekiss and a Bright Powder Chomp. That's different. Anyway, gotta love that Japanese mana. Wait, we gotta double check. Oh, they didn't show the team. Oh, well, we tried. On to the next one. Alrighty. This is, I guess, as standard as a standard can get. But this means that we can definitely set up Trick Room, I think, even though he does have a lot of dark types on his side of the field. He has no way to deal with Amoongus. So we could do Amoongus, we could do Cress. We could even do a Raquinid and bring in like a late game, a Reggie Lucky might actually be somewhat beneficial. Yeah, I'm totally down for that. Late game Reggie Lucky definitely does sound spicy. I just don't really see a chance to bring the Staka here against the Urshi and against the Metagross. It's like Staka really doesn't do much. And then even if I bring Instant, I can't lower the attack stats on the Metagross, and I can't really lower the attack stats on the Urshi, because Urshi just crits anyway. So it just wouldn't benefit me at all to bring Intimidate. So let's go ahead and bring those four. And whenever Trick Room does inevitably run out, after five turns, we have the Regilecki to kind of do its thing. Which is an interesting concept, to bring Regilecki as a late game sweeper. That doesn't really happen too much. Brewski, come on, man. Choose your team. There you go. I mean, he's probably confused. I'd be confused, too, if I saw, like, an Araquidid on the screen. I'd be like, whoa. What is this new Pokemon? My, my dude. My dude is gold. All gold. Urshifu Tornadus. This is exactly why we brought Amoongus. To at least shoo some of those dark moves away from the crest to help us get the trick room up. That's all we need. Let's go ahead. Let's go for the rage powder. Let's go for the trick room. Let's not think too hard about this. If they take out the Amoongus, so be it, right? We get the free switch. If they don't take out the Amoongus, then everyone's going to sleep. It's bedtime, folks. It is way too be it's way too late to be playing Pokemon. It would be bedtime. 
Tornadoes goes for the taunt. Good thing we have mental herb and he has safety goggles. That's good to know. And then there's the wicked blow into the Amoongus. Cool. Very good information we're learning. Trick room still goes up. Now all we gotta do is spore the Ursh. We can't spore the Tornadoes because safety goggles. And then I think we just go in with a Raquinid here. I don't believe if he's gonna attack something with a flying move, it's gonna be the Crest. It's definitely gonna be the Amoongus. Oh, he's just gonna taunt the Amoongus. Wait, I just threw. I Maybe not throw, but... Yeah, Urshi protects anyway. Good. Even better. He's gonna taunt the Amoongus, but that's fine. Or not. I don't know why he doesn't want to taunt the Amoongus. It's just Air Slash is good enough. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. Um. Alright, now I'm in a pretty good spot. I'd say. I could go back with Cress. And then double into this Urshi. I got nothing to lose by doing that. So let's go for the Ice Beam into Urshi. Let's go for the Dynamax. Geyser into Urshi. Urshi already protected. Can't protect again. I mean, I guess it could, he could, but typically that's not something people would depend on. The Tornado is, is going to go for Air Slash on my Araquanid. I can't really prevent that. I'm just going to have to let it happen. I hope that it's not going to do too much. But safety goggles, tornadoes. That's not something I thought of before, but it makes a lot of sense for like Amoongus is. Metagross is coming out here. Oof. Hello, Metagross. The thing with Metagross, though, I'm about to attack it with a... With a max geyser in the, ra in the rain boosted by water bubble and... Mystic Water. So, I don't think it wants to stay on the field for too long. And I get Helping Hand boosted too. But first, let's watch this, uh, this Urshifu go down. I love the, I, he's just, just jabbing the camera. It's so nice. Such a good animation. Urshifu hangs on with Focus Sash, but not for long. About to smack him in the face with some ice cubes. Now, all that's left. Not all that's left, but like one of the big primary targets now becomes this Metagross. And hear me out. I think if I Helping Hand boost this, I can knock out Metagross. Even Dynamax. I hope. It's going to be a weird calc, but I think it's doable. Tornadus comes back out. Yeah, I'm going to Helping Hand boost this. And I'm going to Geyser the Metagross. I believe Metagross goes for Dynamax and or Protect. One of the two. Not both. If he's going to waste Dynamax turn on Max Guard, then I'd... so be it, I guess. That doesn't bother me too much. And the, the reason why I'm not targeting down this Tornadus either is because Tornadus falls to my Reggie Lucky in the back. All right, Mr. Metagross. Mr. Shiny Metagross does Dynamax it. Okay. So let's see how this turn plays out. If I'm actually able to Oko a Metagross with Araquanid, you would have sold me on Araquanid. I would have been sold. I would have actually considered Araquanid a potential Pokemon for some VGC teams if I can Oko a Metagross right here, right now. Let's see how impressed I can be. Helping hand goes through. Is there going to be max guard? No max guard. Max guys are going in. I am not sold. Oh, he KOs himself. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> that's so funny. Brutal. Oh, he does KO himself. Oh, 
Oh, it's so funny. Well, um, uh, that's so sad for my opponent. To be honest, I didn't actually expect the Oko. I didn't think I would get that close to Okoing it. Oh, Arac uh, Incineroar though. Incineroar has been the one thing that Araquanid does not like. I wish Water, bu water Bubble stopped Intimidate. That would have been nice. Well, anyway, we still got some turns of Trick Room left. I'm going to go for the Ice Beam. Actually, no, I should go for Helping Hand here in case he fakes out my Cresselia. We just Helping Hand. We just Geyser the Ensign. And honestly, that might be a GG for my opponent. He might throw He might throw those Gs early. I mean, at the very least, he got me out of the rain. But this instant doesn't want to see me right now. Oh, okay. We're still playing this out. I honestly didn't expect that. There's a fake out onto Crest. That's why we helping handed. Beautiful. Then Max Geyser. <clears throat> Get out of here, Insin. All that's left is his little Tornadus with its nice safety goggles. Going for air slashes. Araquanid don't care. Araquanid is not in fear. All we gotta do now is Trick Room. Oh, wait, no, we don't actually want a Trick Room. We have Reggie like in the back. Okay. That would just be mean. I'm just gonna ice. <laughs> I was thinking about ally switching, that would just be mean. I'm just gonna ice beam instead. My opponent is playing this out, so respect to them. They could still get a flinch here on Araquanid. Alright, we could still get a freeze here with Ice Beam. Oh, they did get the flinch. Oh, no. Uh, Okay, we're still gonna Ice Beam, because that's still the nice thing to do. Like I said, I could ally switch, but... It's pointless. Like, when, you, when it's a 2v1, just 2v1, you know? Just, just attack it. Just smack it in the face. Got rid of my Araquanid. I got the Ice Beam off. I'm not going to be able to take out the Tornadus. He's like, he. it really depends on what my last Pokemon is for him. But just by sending this out, I'm going to ruin all hope. I'm like, hey. I got this bouncing thing. I got this cute little bouncy boy. Yeah, we just Ice Beam. And we go for Thunderbolt. Keep it nice and simple. And that'll be some GG. I guess my opponent's going to keep me waiting. <laughs> so, while we're waiting... Okay, if you guys haven't already hit the like button... Go ahead and do so as Regilecki takes up the Tornadus to end today's video. Wow. I am kind of super impressed with the Raquinid. I'm not going to lie. Anyway, let's get you guys this rental. And there you have the Araquanid team with only a few days left in Series 7. If you want to grab this team, go ahead, have some fun with it on the ladder. I would greatly encourage you to do so because it was actually very fun. And I think Araquanid is a very overlooked Pokemon. And like I said in the beginning of the video, in a couple of days, you're only going to be looking at Kyogre and no other water type Pokemon will exist. So take advantage of, you know, the fact that you're able to use other Pokemon for now. And uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I had a lot of fun with this team. I felt like it does, it does well when you're not against things that, you know, are very disgusting. Like things like Moltres is really good against this team. Incineroar is really good against this team. Fighting types. Um, Urshifus, things like that are, are kind of a damper on this team, but all in all, if you can get the Araquanid set up, if you get the geyser up with the, with the rain and you have helping hand support from the crest, you just take over. Anyway, I'm Kevin with Spooky Sports. If you did enjoy this video, hit the like button and subscribe. Have a great night. Peace out.